But let's begin reading in verse number one. We'll read through the whole chapter again. I'll stop and make some comments in between. If you're able to stand out of respect for God's word, you can. And if you need a Bible, there's a Bible in the pew rack, and I trust that you'll follow along with it. Luke chapter 15, verse 1. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. That's the, that's the, the down and out lost people. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured. That's the uppity up lost people. That's the religious crowd of the day. And they said, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. I'm so glad that was said about the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, and it's to the Pharisees and the scribes who have murmured about the Lord receiving sinners. Which man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find her? He didn't stop till he found it. And when he had found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. The most secure spot was on the shoulders of the shepherd. And I told you it's a picture of eternal security. Because when he has the sheep on his shoulders, he also has their feet by his hand. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And here's a great eternal security found in verse 7. I say unto you, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over the ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. If you can become lost after you get saved, heaven would not rejoice when you got saved. Right. You'd have to wait till you got there before you could rejoice. Somebody needs to go there and tell people. If you can lose it, they need to tell them you're rejoicing, but you're rejoicing too soon because they hadn't got here yet. Then he says another one, that's the lost sheep. Either what having ten pieces of silver, if he shall lose one, we went from uh, 900 sheep to one. Now we go from ten pieces down to one, ten pieces of silver. If he shall lose one piece, Doth not light a candle, sweep the house, and sink diligently till she find it. Again, she continues the search. When she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found that peace which I had lost. I say, Likewise, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner, that repentance and the emphasis is no salvation without repentance. Right. And he said again, we went from a hundred sheep to ten pieces. A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Give me the portion of goods that followed to me. And he divided unto him his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country. There wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, he gathered all and he spent all. There rose a mighty famine and he began to be in want. He went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would vain have filled his belly with the husk of the swine that the swine did eat, and no man gave it to him. And when he came to himself, which means he was mad to start with, he's finally coming back to his senses. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and despair, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Give me, goes to make me. And he arose and came to his father and when his great way off, his father saw him because he was looking for him. Had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Aren't you glad that grace got there before law did? Amen. If law had got there, they'd have took him out and stoned him, but grace covered him. Boy, I'm glad for the grace of God that Amen. takes care of our sins. The son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven, and thy side am no more worthy to be called thy son. And he cut him off right there. He didn't get to finish everything. Father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe. Put it on him. Bring a ring and his hands and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf. 
fatted because it was a prepared calf. It was, the father was looking for him to come home. He set this calf aside when he came home. Let us eat and be merry. And this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. And now we'll take up. We got the lost silver, the lost sheep, the lost son. Now we'll look this morning at the lost sibling. Now his elder son was in the field. You can be lost and be a... In the world, you can be lost and be in church. You can be lost and be away from the Father. You can be lost and be near the Father, but just don't have a relationship with the Father. Watch the elder son. He never one time calls him Father. He never one time calls his brother his brother. There's no relationship. He came and drew nigh the house. He heard music and dancing. He called one of his servants and asked what these things meant. They said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf. Thy brother, thy, thy father, because hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. He answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I thy commandment at any time. Yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, and hast killed, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf, he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was me. We should be merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. Let's go for prayer. Father, I pray that you'll speak to hearts. Oh, what power there is in this passage of Scripture. Oh, how excited I've been as I've studied it and seen things I've never seen before. I'm so thankful for this church, for the calling of God on my life that allows me to have time to dig deep into the Word of God. And the deeper we get, the more we understand we don't understand it. But I pray this morning that you'll make it a time of blessing and encouragement to each heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The father of a lost son is a very compassionate individual. And I tell you, our Savior is very compassionate. Man. Our Father is very compassionate. He's kind to the just and to the unjust. It rains on the just and the unjust, does it not? However, little can be said concerning compassion with regards to the elder brother. There is no compassion. There is no love. There is no concern for his brother. The unforgiving attitude of the elder son was certainly a wicked sin against the father. Now, when you, when you compare the prodigal son and the elder brother, the prodigal son sinned in his actions, in his deeds. The elder son sinned in his attitude. He had a rotten attitude. A news story from liberal Kansas told an elderly woman one time driving a big, new, expensive car. It seemed that she was preparing to back into a parking space when suddenly a young man in a small sports car zoomed into the space ahead of her. You ever had anybody do that? You're waiting on a spot and somebody cuts right in front of you. The lady angrily asked why he had done that. When he could not tell, when he could tell that she was trying to park there, he responds, I'm young and I'm quick. He came out of the shopping center a few minutes later. He found that this elderly lady had used her big, new, expensive car as a battering ram. Backing up and then ramming into his car, he ran up to her, angrily asked her why she wrecked his car. Her response was, because I'm old and I'm rich. <laughs> there are times when things happen to us and we resent it. And oftentimes we react in venting our feelings in very destructive ways. 
There are times when our actions, and excuse me, not our actions, but our reactions get us into trouble. There's no doubt in my mind that the actions of this older brother was horrible and selfish and ungodly and wicked. He was indignant again about the incident. He thought he had been mistreated. His years of service had, no, had received no attention, and his brother was getting all the attention. It was not fair. He fumed about it. The more he thought about it, the worse he got. He could find nothing but fault when the favor of the father was shown to his brother. Some people think the elder son is a picture of a backslidden believer. But I personally believe he is betrayed by his behavior. Can I tell you, there can be no backward movement until there is first a forward movement. You cannot backslid until you first get right with God. A lot of people are saying they're backslidden. Some of those never got salvation. They came for a while and they fell aside because they were not of us, John says. The elder's low conduct convinces me of his lost condition. The grudge that is apparent in this passage makes it evident to me, Brother Ken, that grace is absent. How many see the grudge that's apparent? He's really got it in about this fatty cat. It's pretty evident to me that there's no grace. When one brother left home and the other stayed at home, both were distant in their parental relationship to the father. The one at home was father away, I believe, because the younger son bridged the gap in his return and came back to the father. One son was found while the other remained lost. The truth of the matter is, we don't know what happened to this boy. We don't know if he ever got it right. The story of the younger son is told more often and is probably for, far more familiar than the one about the elder brother, but both are parts of the same story. Right. Jesus used this parable in answer to the accusation that he received the sinners and eateth with them. The younger son pictures the publicans and sinners. The elder son pictures the Pharisees and the scribes. They're both pictured in this parable. What Luke, what I believe, wants us to learn is the posture that keeps us out from the Father's house. One has a posture of repentance, and repentance will bring you into his family, and without repentance, there is no salvation. The stubborn, rebellious stance of the elder brother kept him out of a happy house. Like the Pharisees and scribes, his proud posture would not let him in and would not let him find any pleasure in a soul being saved. When the wayward child comes home, the pleasure kicks in. The sinner's mouth is opened in repentance. The sinner's mouth opened in repentance opens the mouth of the saints in rejoicing. And rejoicing is not expressed if redemption is not experienced. Amen. He could not rejoice because he had never experienced grace. I think I can prove to you that the elder son in my mind was lost. I want to give you three points. I do not think I'll finish. His lost condition is revealed through the return of a lost soul. Consider the wonder of this lost soul coming home. This lost brother. Consider the welcome of the lost son coming home. And it reveals to me the condition of the elder brother. You see, there's the sound of fun. The elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. Now, I want you to understand, the elder son how many understand the elder son has a lot to commend him? He had worked and labored, Brother Campbell, all these years. 
but he had a wrong attitude and spirit when he was working and laboring, Brother Sam. The elder son was not a stranger to hard work. He was not a stranger of long hours. Rising early and returning late was a part of his regular routine. He was out doing what needed to be done. Success on the farm was due to a large part to his labor in the field. The elder son was in the field that day. Sapped of his strength, slow of step, with his clothes soaked with sweat. It was like this every day, but this day was no like no other day. The, uh, the usual scene had an unusual sound and sight. If he looked up, he saw his father running down the path to something coming that way. Now the house was lit up loud and loaded with fun. The elder son came expecting to find things mundane and dull, but instead there was music and dancing. It was commonly quiet around the house, but now noise had taken over. The place was rocking with revelry. An effort to understand what was taking place. There was the meaning that he requested. He called one of his servants one of the servants and asked what these things meant. Now let me ask you this. Let me show you his attitude. Why didn't he go ask his father? Was he at home? Was he estranged from the father though he was in the home? You can be lost in being in church. You can be lost and be baptized. If you don't have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you're dying and going to hell. Amen. Amen. He was confused by the commotion and asked for an answer to the activity. That would have been fine, but why did he ask the father or his father? To get a grip on the gathering, the elder son summoned one of the servants. Does it not seem like everybody else knew what was going on except the elder son? Mm -hmm. For whatever reason not provided, the elder brother had no knowledge of the event. And that it was already in progress and it was already going strong now and he's not there. There's the meaning he requested. There's the message he received. The servant said unto him, thy brother is come. And I can see it now. Have you ever, have you ever seen somebody who said, I know there's something wrong, but you can't figure out what's wrong? And then maybe they say one thing and you say, oh, that's what's wrong. Watch it. The servant says, thy father hath killed the fatty calf. Oh, boy, that's it. The fatty calf! In a simple statement, the servant told the elder brother. He didn't add to it nor subtract from it. Clearly, concisely, and completely, he answered the question without any judgmental comments or any trying to explain what happened. He said, Thy brother has come, and thy father has killed for him the fatted calf. Well, he didn't even say he killed him for him. He said, The father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound. Two sets of words really bothered him. Thy brother, fatty calf. Yeah. Thy brother, fatty calf. The elder brother, Brother Doc, had already heard enough when the younger left home, and now he hears too much in his return. The feelings of the father were not shared by the elder son. The elder son seemed to have no sympathy for his younger brother. He wouldn't even recognize him. He just told the father, he's thy son, not my brother. It was more than the elder son could stand. And with his words in response, there was a speech in fury. He was angry. That word angry means this, provoked. If you're provoked, that means you got a soft spot. How many of you have ever had an ingrown toenail? Probably too embarrassed to admit it. Have you ever had one? 
all you and it and it's it's been infected. All you got to do is what? Touch it. I've had two. Lord knows I don't want no more. I remember going to Dr. Rose with my first one, and I called Ms. Marie, and I said, Ms. Marie, I said, will it hurt? Mm. She said, it'll feel better when he gets through. I said, that's not what I asked. I asked, will it hurt? She said, that's not what I said. I said, it'll feel better when he gets through. Oh, Dr. Rose come in, and he says, it's definitely infected. He said, I'm going to have to pull it out. I said, you ain't touching it without knocking me out. I said, because that thing hurts if you just touch it. I've been living with it now for two weeks. It's too tender. I can't even walk on it. He says, I know. I see it. He said, I'm going to give you a shot. I said, I don't mind the shot, but I better not hurt when you, I better not hurt, you better not hurt that toe. <laughs> My wife said, he shot me. She said, that needle looked like it was coming out on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> I watched my wife go through it four times in the shop. Still, they finally got her. But mine was more something. She's complicated, like her daddy. But, but anyway, he shot the other side. And I'm watching. And then he says, give me the, whatever he called it, but it looked like card key pliers. And I said, don't you touch it yet. And I, he said, sit back. And I sat back. I said, don't touch it yet. It's still numb. He said, no, it's not. I'm pinching you now, and you can't even feel it. Took them Carter key pliers. Cut that toe bill all the way back. I sat up, and I liked that thing. <laughs> I said, he said, you sit back, because if you don't, I'm going to have to revive you. And then like a smart aleck, when he got it out, I said, can I have another? Can I have another one? He said, you can have as many as you want. I don't care, but I don't think he will because I'll carbonize this one. And can I tell you, it was so sensitive. But when I got home, I mean immediately after he pulled it out and the pain medicine wore off, I knew the problem was taken care of. Yep. My wife went through it four times and every time she leaves, she said, you said when they got it out, it felt better. I said, it did. She said, mine feels no better. Finally, the fourth time, I told the doctor on her, and it wasn't Dr. Rhodes. I said, this is your last chance. If you don't get it this time, we go somewhere else. I said, yeah, we've had somebody that you hired worked on it. He says, I'll get it out. And he got it out, and it got better. There was something underneath the elder son's skin. Thy brother. Fatty cat. He's provoked. He's upset. He was exasperated by the event. And with scorching speech, he blistered the banquet held in behalf of his brother. The anger of the elder son at the appearance of the brother is a giveaway to his guilt. If he had been right with God, he would have rejoiced in his brother coming home. Yeah. The presence of anger shows the absence of affection. One of the signs of salvation is our love one for another. That's right. We know we have passed from death into life because we what? Have love. love the brethren. And the Bible said he would not go in. Can you, not, can you not see him? Can you not see him, Jerry? So mad, so upset, so troubled. And he said, Plus God, I ain't even going in the house. Everybody else inside the house, Brother Thomas, was having a good time, but the elder son had nothing to enjoy. And that would not go in, describe a past action that was continuing in the present. It was just like this. He said no, and he was standing on his no. That's the final answer. Therefore, the father came out. And entreated. Somebody went inside and told the father, Your son, elder son's on the outside, he won't even come in. He went outside in an effort to heal his wounded spirit. By his movement, the father demonstrated that he had equal love for both boys. 
one who had a problem with actions, one who had a problem with attitude, one who had a problem with deeds, and the other one had a problem with disposition, but the Father loved them both. Aren't you glad that God loves us no matter how, what the depths of our sin is? Yes. No matter what we've done, God loves the church goer as good as he loves the sinner out there in the honky tonk. He took the initiative in going to the repenting son because he ran to him. He takes the initiative, and, and I will tell he takes the initiative to go to the resenting son. God takes the initiative in reconciliation, man. not man. People said, I found God. My friend doesn't be fathering the truth. You weren't looking for God. And let me tell you something else. God never has been lost. Man. God found me. Right. Yeah. Man. Adam and Eve did not come looking for God. God came looking for them. Sinful men do not seek God, but Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Yeah. We love him because he first loved us. Do you not see the Father's heart in his prayer? I, I, that overwhelms me. I think sometimes I need to go back and, and I may do it next week. I don't know. And go back and show you the Father in this parable. Amen. Show you Jesus in this parable. Remember one time David was asked a question. You want to fall into the hand of the hand of men, or basically, or fall into the hand of God? He said, "Let me fall into the hand of God." Amen. You say why? Because God is more compassionate than men are. That's right. Can I tell you, we're more harder on sinners than God is. Amen. Yeah. Let me tell you. By that I mean God. God died for sinful men. There but let me tell you, God will save any and all that come in humble repentance and faith. Amen. He'll Amen. not turn them away if they'll come. His lost condition is revealed by the return of a lost soul. Do you not see his lost condition by the return of a lost soul? Now, don't you see a second thing, and I'll just start there. I won't finish. His lost condition is revealed by the resolve of a little mind. A little mind. What's that? You never gave me a kid. The father's appeal to him was not well received, and, and it's answered with an accusation. And to justify his anger, the elder brother stated the case for his complaint. He says, Father, your generosity and your grace is one-sided. The only problem was his grace and generosity was not one-sided. God had told him, all that I have, the Father said, all that I have is thine. The Father said, you went overboard for the younger son, and you never got on board for me. The Father threw a banquet for the younger one, but you only threw me bones. One son had a fatted calf, and the other had a skinny little goat. You never gave me what you gave him. I preached a message on this, but I won't emphasize it. How many understand the sun is extremely big, large, huge? How many understand from the sun? Did you know? I had a penny. Anybody got a penny? Right there. Like 18, you got one? Y'all broke his eye. Okay. I, that's fine, at least I don't need I can use illustration. As big as the sun is, I can pull up, if I pull a penny close enough to my eye, and I'm looking at the sun, I can block out my view of the sun completely. How many understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, brother, we get something underneath our in our crawl, we get something that upsets us so bad. We can't see all the good. All we can see is what? The bad. Yeah. Maybe the preacher didn't speak to you when you walked out. He spoke to somebody else. I had a man say that to me one day. Uh -huh. And I thought the guy was pretty spiritual. 
Well, but put this way, he claimed to be pretty spiritual. This guy did. I mean, I was shocked. And he said, for the last two Sundays, I walked out of church and you hadn't spoke to me. And I thought, I spoke to you in church, but when you were coming out, both times, somebody else was talking. I mean, I'm standing here. You got people on both sides. You can't shake hands now, but I try to greet them. But, but, but you can't. Uh, what are you going to do? I mean, I, I couldn't speak to him while I was shaking somebody else's hand over here. But he pulled that so close to his eye that he didn't recognize I'd spoke to him in church both times. I'd come out and spoke to him. And he was the type of person you were going to speak to him. Whether I spoke to him out the door or anything, he was going to speak to me. I mean, how many understand there are just some people that demand more attention? And he demanded attention. I knew that. I tried to give him attention. But for two Sundays, I guess. And by the way, he knew exactly how many Sundays it was. But how many of them other Sundays I did speak to him when he went out the door? And by the way, how many understand? All he had to do was what? Just wait, and I would have spoke to him. The elder brother had that fatty calf. I'm going to have to close, but I got this in my notes. Somewhere here. Don't let one dead calf forfeit the joy of the Lord in your life. The calf is already dead, and he's missing out on enjoying the things of God. I'll ask you a question. You don't have to raise your hand. How many of you have ever been like the elder brother? You said, preacher, I'm saved. I wasn't lost. But yeah, I've had a crawl in my saddle. And it got me. I admit, it bothered me. It got me. It'll keep bothering you until you get it out. Right. <clears throat> and most of the time, people don't even realize that they've even done it. I say, I have never deliberately tried to hurt somebody. I got accused of something last week. And I had forgotten. The other it was so far from my mind, I couldn't remember. But when they told me I did it, I said, that sounds just like it. And I said, but let me explain to you why I did it. I said, I did it that way so I wouldn't have to hurt you publicly. I didn't want you to be ashamed and embarrassed publicly. I did it that way for your sake. I said, now, I don't remember doing it, but if you say I did it, it sounds like I would do, do exactly that. But I did it so that you would not be embarrassed. But it was like a pity. Thou never gavest me a kid. And yet the father said, All that I have in the house is what? Thine. It's all yours. But all he could see. husband forgets to pick up his underwear. <laughs> one time, I'm not saying I don't know, it's more than one, but, but he forgets to pick him up one time, and you hear this thing, you never pick up your underwear. All she saw was the one time. She didn't see the many times that she did pick them up. All the good is blotted out. I 
I tell you, Christian, we need to examine our disposition. Because mm -hmm. some of us are just like the elder brother. Our attitude wreck is wreck. It stinks in the nostrils of God. Right. I wish I had not done this the other day. I did it, and I'm still reaping it. So is Mary and so is Logan, and I'll confess it. I found another dead, they don't even know it. I found another dead mouse the other day. Huh? No, not there. But I put it, put him in the trash can. It's collected like back. The stench is still there when you pull the lid. He was in the plastic bag, but the stench was still there. Every time you take that lid off, I think, Arr! Just a tiny He was caught in a trap. And there was traps. On a piece of paper, and if you ever tried to pull one off a piece of paper to reuse it, you can't do it. You get hard to part of him on there and part of him off. So I just folded the whole thing up and threw it in the trash can. And then two, three days later, I went back and licked the lid, and I said, oh, no. Just a tiny thing. Calls it off the stage. When I lifted that lid, I thought, how many tiny things in the life of God's children cause a stench in the nostrils of God? Not our actions, our attitudes. Paul says, Lord, cleanse ourselves of sins of the flesh, sins of the we're quick to condemn a homosexual, a lesbian, uh, uh, somebody that's committing adultery. But how about somebody that's gossiping? How about somebody that's filled up with pride and stinks in the nostrils of God? We need to watch ourselves. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Quietness this morning. I'd ask you first of all,